go. Great. Can I, uh, I have a, so who's sharing first? I have a, a couple of slides. I have one slide, I think, Jason. But anyway, let's just welcome everyone to the session. I, I've been looking forward to this because we actually get to show uh, some real code in action. Uh, we get to take a look at Vault Iris and uh, uh, Vault Foundry in action. And uh, I know we've got some exciting things to uh, show you for that. Also, uh, at the end, uh, we're going to show you the link to the Vault MX Lotus Script Toolkit that Jason was talking about earlier on in the event. And I have a QR code ready for your cameras to take you out to GitHub so you can download it and um, take a look at it for yourself. So I think without any further ado, right, Jason, are we handing to you or to Michael to Actually, take Surendra, the first? Surendra oh, yeah. from uh, our team in India uh, is going to take us through um, how would you get started and what would you do? Yeah, Surendra, why don't you go ahead and um, just drop to the demo. We've got a live demo set up for everybody. And these this is a demo that is... I think going to be fascinating and interesting to the audience. And interestingly, this is one of the hikes. So when you first start up, when you first download the Visualizer product, even as it exists before we release the Voltamex branded, you can start up and do this yourselves in a matter of a handful of minutes. Right. Let's let's get going. So live we can demo. Live demo. Flip straight to Visualizer. Yeah. Sure. So, hello everyone, this is Surendra. Uh, today we shall be presenting a demo of a simple application named Employee Directory to walk you through the flow of creating an application, the front end using Iris and wiring it up to the back end on Foundry. Before we begin, uh, let us have a look at the app in action and we shall then go back in time to build the app. So, this is the Employee Directory that we built. This is the login screen. Uh, let me just log in with my credentials. So once the login is done, we are showing that the login is successful and then we are showing the list of employees. Once we click on any employee, we are showing the details of the particular employee. So now let us get started with building the front end using the iris. Yeah. The first screen that we have seen in the app is the login screen. Uh, in iris balance, we call it as a form. Login is a piece of UI that is most common to find in applications. Such blocks of UI can be found as prefabricated components. Uh, so I'll show you how the prefabricated components can be used. So for example, since we need login screen here, I'm going to search login. So these are the list of login screens available that are already built in with the iris. So I'm using this login screen in this particular demo. So now that the UA is done, so I need to connect to the backend to connect to the identity service for the login. So that is as simple as drawing and dropping the login service onto the button. So I'm drawing and dropping the login screen to the login button. So, so there is different options. For example, in this instance, I'm using on click. So this particular service will be invoked when I click on click. So there is a module open actionator using which we can uh, the user can define actions uh, that that will be triggered when this particular event will be will be triggered for example in this case on click so uh, in this case since we need uh, uh, we need to map the username and uh, password fields to the service input so let me just map them so I'm mapping the username field to the user ID input, password field to the password input, done. So now, uh, now that the login screen is done, uh, we, the next screen will be the list of employees. So that is as simple as uh, drawing and dropping uh, the service itself to the form. 
So this is the employees employee list uh, service. I'm dragging and dropping the service. It is showing me two options, list and details. So since we need to show the list here, I am selecting the list and clicking OK. As you, as you can see, uh, just by dragging and dropping, uh, the Iris has generated the UA that is needed for the service. So, and the, the backend integration is also done. We can uh, actually achieve that using uh, different widgets uh, that are available as part of the default library. Uh, for example, it has label, image, etc. These are all available. Uh, or you can we can design this using the prefabricated components that we show that we have shown in the login screen. Again, uh, the last uh, form in this application is uh, the details form. So again, it can be achieved from dragging and dropping. Uh, since we need details here, I'm selecting details. So uh, please note that uh, it, is, it is asking, it is detecting that uh, a list form is already there in the application. It is asking me if I want to navigate from the list form to the details form. So I'm selecting yes. So it will be automatically navigating from list form to the details form. So I don't need to select anything else. I don't need to map uh, anything from the front from the front end to back end, or I don't need to select the navigation also. So we have we are uh, done with the login screen, list screen, and detail screen. The navigation from list and details are done. I need to navigate from uh, login to the list. Uh, let me just do that right away. So I need to do that once the login is successful. So I'm. This is this is the service that we are invoking. So this is the uh, action that is going to be done once the login is successful. I'm selecting navigate since I need to navigate to the list form. I'm searching for navigate here. Uh, form two is the list form that we have. So I'm selecting form two. So the form the application is built. So uh, let me just introduce you to the IQ part, uh, which is uh, an AI stretch chatbot. So the, we have built the app, we have created the app, and we need to build it. So there are two options to build. One is preview and the other is build. Preview is for uh, quickly building and launching and testing in the app before it to uh, limit the time it takes for development. Build is for building and uh, uh, inst I mean, Publishing it to the actual app stores. So I'm just asking if you can preview it for preview iPhone for me because uh, I need to do it quickly. So just by typing preview for iPhone, it's building. So uh, again, uh, if it is first time building, uh, we are going to build the whole app. Uh, from the next time onwards, if we modify any form or uh, create a new form, only the only the only the entities that are modified or created afresh will be generated. We don't generate the whole library, own whole binaries uh, from the scratch. So we are pre previewing. Yeah, and this build is is pretty cool. It, it has the ability to preview both as you're going to show it, as well as we'll get the screen before you see it yet, you get the screen so that you can run it on your device as well. This this building just takes a sec. If it's got time, we could even talk about the source of all those services being supplied by Foundry. Yeah, so uh, the, the one that I've shown, uh, the dragging and dropping of the services uh, is called data panel in the Iris world. So the, Using the data panel, we can connect to the backend that is Foundry and uh, have a list of uh, uh, the services. So these are the services that are available in the EMP DR native, that is the Foundry app from the backend. So as you can see, the IQ is saying the live preview is completed. I think the important thing for people to know here is this is not this is not just some web app on the iPhone. This is an actual native application running on yeah, the Yeah, I'm actually 
sorry to, sorry to interrupt i am actually running this in my uh, actual iphone device mm -hmm. yeah, you 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 did change it from when we were talking about it i thought you were just going to do the preview on device uh, or on screen instead of on device that's awesome this is live yeah this is yeah this is uh, i'm i'm preview it on my actual device and uh, one more cool feature that i am going to showcase that is uh, using the iq again i'm asking if you can if the app if the iq can translate for me i'm selecting spanish we probably have a few people here that will recognize the output i'm sure we will so just by selecting uh, the language the iq is automatically translating the language using the google translator so uh, it will collect all the strings that are uh, used in the app and it will automatically get the corresponding uh, uh, the language text and then convert the translate the app so yeah, as you can see as you can see the app is converted to the converted to the spanish language you can switch between different languages using so this is the app canvas part where we can uh, this is Visivic, that is what you see is what you get. So whatever that you are seeing in this app canvas, it will be reflected exactly in the actual device. That's pretty that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, thank and, you. and this is one of the reasons why one of our customers I, I talked about has actually uh, built they could actually take, they built 20 plus applications and deploy them to over a hundred countries, right? With minimal customization. That's very impressive. And there was a question on our last session. I don't think we ever answered was that, can these applications be on the app store? The answer is yes, absolutely they can. Yeah. Or your own private app store. Right, both, both modes. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't want to go that way, create a PWA. That works too. Very, very nice demo. I will go ahead and mention one more thing that we glossed over at the beginning. The same time cafes that show up on the agenda are being staffed by developers for these products, including uh, Surendra. Is, I really, again, appreciate this demo and there is so much more to see and ask about it. Things, customizing the dictionaries making sure that you've got the flexibility, import assets, group assets, and distribute them across teams. All sorts of really fantastic functionality, both on the front end and then the services piece. If you flip back to the slide, we maybe spend just a moment, Jason, hitting that there is, in fact, a toolkit available out on github.com right now that you could go grab. Yeah, there it is. With QR code to, to jump into our HCL software GitHub, and with just a few clicks, you can start getting playing to connect. So those services that you've seen demonstrated as examples could actually be substituted in for services from Foundry that are Domino native sources. Piece of cake. And Andrew, do you want to maybe mention how somebody could get to that? If you page down one more time, we've got the landing page for yeah, I think you I think you said it, Michael. Um, I added the QR code specifically to make it easy for people to get to it. Um, I would also encourage you to click one link up above because uh, that's there are there are other projects in there you may want to take a look at as well. And uh, this is where we're going to be open sourcing a whole host of things is in this particular location in HCL Tech Software. And there's other goodies there, by the way, even today. Yeah, take a take a look at it. Uh, actually, Jason, is this where the uh, Vault MX documentation and tutorials is going to arrive as well? Correct. Correct. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's exciting. Very All good. Right. All, right. All right, we're at the top of the hour. Yep. That was thank great. you, everybody. So, Hendra, thank you very much for the great demo. So, Hendra, that, great that job. Was so yes. easy. When, when you were drag and dropping that would for me that was like a mic drop moment as i was saying to to jason in the background thank you thanks fantastic all the best all right thank you take care enjoy the rest of the conference bye bye